Welcome to Smart Architectural Programming. My name is Mohammed, and coding alongside me is uh, George. And um, and today, you know, we'll have a, a brief talk topic on uh, vulnerability scanning. Um, don't want to spend too much time, but it's definitely going to be uncomplicated. Uh, I'll let you take over, Mohammed. Thank you. So. If we, when we're talking about basic vulnerability scans, this is more so related to the cybersecurity domain, and Python is a main, Python is is the main language that is used in cybersecurity uh, operations, uh, and along with machine learning, Python is also very important in machine learning and artificial intelligence. But we're not going to go too deep into the security aspects of a vulnerability scan, because that is an entire specialized domain uh, with specialized libraries and specialized knowledge. Without which, if, if if you're with which, if you're not familiar, you're probably not going to understand half of what we're what we're going to go through. But what we can simply explain here is to set up a simple structure of a scanner, um, in which you can switch the logic to actually test for, uh, you know, uh, you can switch the logic within your function to basically set up set it in a way where you can actually test those uh, vulnerabilities on a website. So, uh, you know, uh, based on that premise, um, the scanner we're going to build is going to be a very basic and naive scanner because, uh, again, in the real world, vulnerability scanning is much more complex and requires thorough testing. And uh, you ultimately require permission before scanning someone else's server or website, right? So the important thing is you need to obtain authorization before running any vulnerability scanner against a target. Unauthorized scanning is illegal in many jurisdictions. So, you know, again, without authorization, you cannot run vulnerability scans on any websites. So to run this script, we need to download and install Python and the request library, both of which we can install using pip install. Now, moving uh, on that, when we go to the specific code base here, again, we are not testing for the more specialized aspects of cybersecurity. There are specialized libraries to do that. Uh, and since we're not doing that, and we're just building a simple scanner infrastructure and uh, here, uh, we're just going to import the requests library first here, as you can see at the top. And then we define a function that checks for directory listing. Now, this function could check for anything. You can have multiple functions checking for multiple things, but uh, you know, that depends on your level of knowledge and what you're looking for. In this video, we're just going to put up a simple scanner, which can, trans you know, and this logic can be translated again into uh, more specialized aspects of vulnerability scanning. But uh, for that, you need more, you know, you need specialized knowledge, which uh, if requested, we can create another video on. But for now, we're just going to focus on the scanning aspect of this code. So we define a simple function that checks for directory listing. Now, we're not going to go make a very complicated uh, you know, scanner that's going to test for uh, every different identifier through which you can identify whether a website has directory listings or not. Our um, logic is very simple. We look for the title tag, uh, which in, uh, including specific uh, you know, uh, uh, key uh, words in it. And if that is, uh, if we find those words, um, we, uh, we classify that website as having being a directory listing. So uh, within this uh, function, we do use a try and accept block. The try block, if you move down here, and the reason we're using try and accept block is that in case, uh, whenever you're working with third party websites or third party APIs or third party servers, right, that you do not, do not directly control. If you do not use try and accept blocks, uh, you might force your program to, you know, to hang or crash because uh, you don't you're not handling the circumstances in which those third party um, softwares or utilities or APIs or servers that you're uh, waiting to get data from do not give you the data that 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 would just completely uh, cry, you know make sure a program is unworkable and cra uh, making it crash so in this case we use a try and accept block to make sure that if we get a response we use our logic if we don't get a response uh, you know we simply uh, you know, uh, return false, making sure the program keeps on running without any problems. So in the try block, uh, we create a variable that tries to get uh, uses request.get. Basically using this function, um, uh, we uh, go to the URL, 
that we uh, that is being sent into this uh, function here and we um, use our code to actually get uh, you know uh, uh, connect with that URL so if the response status code is 200 which means the website responded as it should and the title index of forward slash uh, title tag with index of forward slash is in the response text then we return true else we return false and we also return false if the try accept try try block uh, does not uh, you know does not work or is not able to get a response from the url at all so we uh, uh, use the accept block where we add requests dot request exception and return false there now um, this uh, portion of the code that we're saying here is just to simply run the script so basically in this code we create a variable that uses input to ask us or the user for the input or the url that you know it needs to test if the directory listing um, uh, if the check direct then we run the check directory listing function that we created above and send in the target url we get from the user if that is positive it prints directory listing is enabled on target url and if it is for uh, um, if it is, is false, it return uh, it prints directly listing is not enabled on the target URL. That is basically the entire code base. Now we're going to run that code base and see if it works. Um, so right now uh, on uh, on one side of the windows, we I have created a simple server um, with a you know directly dot HTML uh, dot HTML, which is to test for a simple uh, uh, directly listing and if you notice here it has the title tag with the index of forward slash within that so this should return positive in our code and we'll run any other website to see if it runs positive again this is a very very naive and simple scanner so unless specifically that title tag is there and that uh, on that specific website page uh, whose URL you give it will not return positive so if we go back here we're going to run the script first target URL I'm just gonna write simply yelp.com as a negative test case uh, yelp.com does have a directory uh, but I'm not opening the directory page directly and I'm not catering for anything other than the title index having those exact words so this is going to return a false yep directory listing is not enabled on Yelp. that's uh, a simple you know that's a simple scan test that we did uh, and then we're going to run this application again now this time we're going to use our website again the reason we're using this uh, our own website is because this is very very specific parameters for testing that we added in the scanner so to make sure that we do a positive test of that scanner we need to create our own html uh, simple html page that we can use to test whether this uh, works out or not so we go back to vs code we paste this uh, url that we got we check for that directly listing is enabled because again we created this specifically to test positive for that title tag and this is how you can create a very very simple scanner and you know the only thing different that you could i mean if you you can set up the exact same infrastructure here right and the, well, you could change uh, the you know the function uh, that i created here to test for other things on the website maybe that's just looking for some html tag or image or video or some word on the web page or simply like some simply scanning for that or in other cases like when we talk with vulnerability scans uh, you can test for specific uh, security loopholes a website or a server could have and test for those right so it's it's basically just using the simple infrastructure and you can using this you can do a lot of different things uh, uh, when you're scanning different websites uh, anything you want to add, George, before we uh, wrap this video? Uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, this is a quick explanation. It was pretty uncomplicated. I think uh, you drove the um, the main concepts home. Uh, the only thing I just want to mention is uh, if, if you all uh, who are watching this video, if you have any specific videos or content that you're interested in, uh, please put it in the comment section below and we will work to, you know, customize uh, content specifically for you. That's all I have, Mohammed. Thank you. And with that, um, we're going to wrap our uh, wrap this video, and we'll see you in the next video of smart architectural programming.
Thanks.